Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, I would like to continue talking about similarity and using the similarity uh, for uh, calculating the volumes. But before talking about the volume of the pyramid, which is my next topic, I would like to just exemplify how the theory of limits um, can be used in two-dimensional case. Uh, because in a three-dimensional case, it will be basically the same from, from the idea standpoint. So, in this lecture, I would like to derive the formula for the area of a triangle using this limit theory approach, which is going to be used for pyramids as well. Well, obviously, we all know that the area of triangle can be, uh, can be derived differently. For instance, if you have this triangle, you can always make the same triangle of the same area and uh, make a parallelogram. And the area of the parallelogram can be actually converted into the area of this rectangle. So the area of this triangle will be, would be half of the area of this rectangle which equals to the product of its base, which is the same as the base of a triangle by height, which is the same as the height altitude of the triangle. So this formula uh, base times uh, altitude to this base divided by 2 can be derived purely geometrically, which I did before. Now I'm going to derive it differently, and again, the purpose is not to derive the formula, the, pur the purpose is to explain the idea how um, it can be done using the theory of limits, because this would be used in three-dimensional case. All right, so let's assume you have a triangle a, B, C, this is A, this is H. Now, this altitude has a base A, H. So, B, C equals A, A, H. Altitude, base and altitude. And again, my purpose is to derive this formula. Now, the way how I'm going to do it is the following. I choose some number n, integer positive number, and I will divide AH into n equal parts. And draw horizontal lines. So this would be my B1, B2, B3, and B4, which is equal to B. This would be C1, C2, C3, and C4, which is C. So in this case, N is equal to 4. All right. Now, what I will do next is I will convert each trapezoid which I have here and the triangle on the top into a rectangle. Now the way I will do it is the following. I will just make it this way. So now I will assume, and this is a non-rigorous part of this uh, lecture, I will assume that the area of this um, uh, new uh, object, I don't even know how to call it, um, it's kind of a step, ladder, whatever it is. So the area of this particular new object, which is a combined area of all these rectangles. As my number of divisions 
tends to infinity, increases to infinity, would actually be closer and closer to the area of this particular triangle. So, if my n is increasing, the number of these is increasing, and therefore each one of them is decreasing, so the height of this little rectangle would be smaller and smaller, which means that these steps would be smaller and smaller, they will be closer to the triangle. And that's why I'm assuming, and this is again a, an assumption, I do not pretend that I rigorously proved it, so I assume that if I will go to a limit, then uh, as n uh, goes to infinity, the area, um, so, uh, the sum of the area of these uh, rectangles would approach closer and closer to the area of the uh, triangle. Well, let's try to calculate exactly the area of this step-like object and see if we will have really this particular um, limit existing and uh, it will show us whether we are uh, approaching this particular formula that we know from the geometric considerations. All right, so let's consider a particular number n, which is from 1 to n. Let's say in this case it's b2, n equals 2 in this case. And let's consider a triangle A, B, N, C, N, which is this triangle. and triangle ABC. Now, this line from BN to, to, to CN uh, is parallel to BC. Obvious uh, consequence of this is that these two triangles are similar to each other because these lines are common, this is parallel, so all angles are the same. Now, how about the lengths of uh, segment B and C N? Well, everything is proportional, right? So uh, B and C N relates to B C as let's put uh, letters H one, H two, H three, and H four which is equal to h. It's related as altitudes for obvious reasons since uh, triangles are similar then the corresponding altitudes are also of the same uh, type of... so it's a h n to a h. Now, but this we know because a h n is n pieces of these small things and a h, I mean, and lowercase n, and a a a a h is uppercase. So this is equal to n over n. So that's simple. Which means that b n c n is equal to b c, which is a. Right, b c is a times n divided by capital N. And H N A H N is equal to A H which is altitude also times N over N. Now what follows this is trivial. What follows is the following. Now let's summarize all these uh, rectangle uh, areas of these rectangles. Now the area of each rectangle is the product of its base, which is B N C N, times its height, which is one eighth. The height of each one is one eighth, one eighth 
one nth of the total height. So the area which is s n there, uh, s n um, is equal to b n c n times h m minus one h m, right? This is from h n minus one to h n, and this is from b n to c n, which is equal to now this we know a n over n and this is h divided by capital N right a h over n squared times n n is a variable that's why I put it separately a and h and capital N are constants now the area which I am interested in is, is sum of these, sum of Sn when n is changing from 1 to capital N, which is equal to what? Ah over n square, 1 plus 2 plus etc. plus n, right? Because this is changing from 1 to a capital N, right? So if I'm summarizing, for S1 it's 1, for S2 it's 2, etc. When I'm summarizing, I can just factor out this and I will have this in my in parentheses. Now, this is easy. This is just arithmetic progression which we know how to deal with and um, the uh, I will I'll just write the formula which I remember, which is kind of a rare case, but I do remember it in this case. Uh, for those who don't remember the formula, go to the corresponding lecture on arithmetic progression and it's derived, basically. It's very easy. Well, actually, it's very easy. I can do it right now. If you write this formula in a different order and then summarize both, you will have n plus 1 plus n plus 1 plus etc plus n plus 1 n times right that's how you do it that's how all arithmetic progressions are summarized you just write it in reverse and add vertically so since I added the same one so I have to delete it uh, divided by 2 so it's n times n plus 1 divided by 2 that's the sum of one uh, series of arithmetic regression. All right. So that's the formula. This is sum of all uh, areas of rectangles. And again, let me just repeat, I assume that as n approaches infinity, the, this particular um, formula should have a limit something like this. So let's just do it and let's check if that's true. Let me just make it a little bit more palatable. I can factor, well I can actually reduce by n, right? And uh, I will write it in this way, a h over 2 n plus 1 divided by n. How about this, right? 2 is here, n is there, one of the n's is reduced, so that's the result. Or, if you wish, a h over 2, if I will divide, I will get 1 plus 1 over n. Or, again, I can just simplify it easier, that's when I multiply by 1, and that's when I multiply by 1n. Now it's obvious that as n goes to infinity, this thing obviously tends to zero, and what's remaining is this. So in the limit, when capital N goes to infinity, some of these rectangles, some of the areas of these rectangles, has a limit which is this. 
So that's basically an approach how I can calculate the area of this particular figure. Now, what's not really rigorous? You have to really understand my assumptions, um, which, uh, which definitely need some proof, etc. Well, assumption was that this step-like object um, uh, has the area which is approaching the area of a triangle as n goes to infinity. Now, um, what if I will divide it differently? What if I will use um, not equal uh, divisions, but uh, divisions of, an, of, of some, some, some kind of division, which, which is not really making these equal, but still I can, um, I can make a process when the height goes to zero. Because in this case, my height is 1 over n, right? 1 over capital N. But they are all equal. Maybe they are not supposed to be equal. I mean, there are many different ways to approach this um, purely philosophical dilemma. How uh, should I divide this particular triangle and convert it into a sum of rectangles um, uh, to make this particular um, limit equal to some really area of this triangle because maybe if I will divide it differently uh, I will get a different limit I mean in this case I got exactly this particular formula this particular formula but maybe in other cases I will not so this is something which definitely needs to be addressed on a much more rigorous level however my purpose was again to just demonstrate this particular approach of approximating the area of a triangle with sum of areas uh, with ultimately uh, infinite sum of the area of uh, small rectangles. And that's exactly what I'm going to use for pyramids as one of the ways to derive the formula for the volume of the pyramid. And there are others there are other approach based on Cavalieri principle, which is also um, kind of defined in this particular topic um, because it's related to the fact that um, in, in the similar figures, uh, in two-dimensional cases, uh, the linear dimensions are similar because that's exactly how I, I have derived the lengths of the BNC, BNCN. In the three-dimensional cases, I will have the, the areas uh, uh, proportional to each other. Okay, that's it for today. Um, I would suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. It basically explains the same thing again. Um, and um, it's on the unisor.com, of course. Um, that's where I actually suggest you to watch uh, any of my lectures because the notes are very important. Um, so basically that's it for today and again prepare for um, making this particular approach a little bit more um, complicated when I will move to three-dimensional world for the pyramid. This lecture I would consider to be as, as an introduction to three-dimensional case of the volume of the pyramid. Thanks very much and good luck.